Welcome to your video on solving equations that have variables on both sides. Like usual, we are going to start with some steps. Step number one is to use opposite operations to move all of the variable terms to either the left or the right side of the equation. My recommendation is that you slide all the variables over to the left hand side just because that's where you're used to seeing them, although you can really choose either side. Now remember, because you're taking a variable and moving it over the equal sign, on the opposite side, you have to use those opposite operations. And what that means is you're either going to be adding or subtracting the variable terms to get them on one side. After you do that, it should look like a regular old two-step equation. And those steps are going to be the same as what we looked at a few videos ago. So step two is to undo the addition and subtraction. And step three is to undo multiplication and division. Let's get started with some examples. Our first equation here, you'll notice you've got 4x on the left-hand side and 3x on the right-hand side. We're going to get all the variables on the left-hand side. So that means I have to do something with the 3x. The opposite operation, because it's a positive 3x, would be subtraction. So underneath, I'm going to write minus 3x. And then on the same side, or on the other side of the equation, right underneath the x term, I'm also going to write minus 3x. You have to make sure that you're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So now we combine like terms. 4x take away 3x is 1x. And everything else comes down. Minus 2 equals, and then the positive 4. And now you should recognize this is really just a two-step equation. We're going to add 2 to both sides. Our goal is to isolate the x. We can bring down the 1x. The minus 2 and the plus 2 cancel, and then the 4 and the 2 combine to make 6. And then your last step is to divide both sides by 1. And clearly dividing by 1 just leaves us with our number 6. Now in the directions here, it does say to check your answer. We'll show you how to do the check on this first one, and then after that, we'll kind of leave it up to you. When you check, what that means is you go back to the original equation that you were given, and now that you know the value for x, you're going to substitute that in. So for x, remember when there's a number written right next to a letter, it means multiplication. So here you're just going to use parentheses to indicate multiplication, and you're going to put the 6 in because that's what x is. Everything else comes down. We've got 3 times x again, so we're going to sub in the 6 there. And now you just work on each side of the equation separately. So on the left-hand side, we're going to go through our order of operations. Multiplication comes first, so 4 times 6 is 24. Bring down the minus 2. And the same thing on the right-hand side. Multiplication comes first, so it's 18 plus 4. 24 take away 2 is 22. And 18 plus 4 is 22. Now the 22 is not significant other than both sides of the equation are equal to 22 and that's the important thing. It doesn't matter what that number is, they just have to be equal to each other and that means that you did your work correctly. So the answer is x equals 6. Our next example looks very similar. Um, we're going to again try to get all the n's on the left hand side. Only this time I have a minus 6n, so the opposite operation is to add. So I'm going to do plus 6n on both sides. We combine like terms by just combining the coefficients. So I have a positive 5 and a positive 6 to make a positive 11. Everything else comes down. And on the right-hand side, the minus 6n and the plus 6n have canceled. So that's, that's why that's gone. Now we're just back to a two-step equation. We're going to add 6 to both sides. So we have 11n equals 22. Divide both sides by 11. And we find that n is 2. You could very easily go through and show your check again simply by plugging it in. We won't do that here, but um, you could even do that on using your calculator. All right, the last two examples are really tricky because they have fractions. Um, what we're going to teach you is a method called clearing the fractions. And all you have to do to clear fractions is multiply by the lowest common denominator. So you'll notice here we only have one fraction and the denominator is two. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 2. Um, we're going to use the distributive property. So when I take the 2 and multiply it by each term, the 2 times the negative 2. And then I'm going to do plus 3x times 2 equals 4 times 2 plus 5x over 2 times 2. And you could write this as 2 over 1 just to make it look a little bit nicer for multiplying those fractions. So now we simplify. On the left-hand side, it's negative 4 plus 6x equals 8 plus... Now, don't write 10x over 2. 
the whole purpose in clearing the fractions was to clear out the fraction. So cross cancel, those twos cancel, and we end up with 5x. Now we're back to an equation that has variables on both sides. We're going to get them over to the left hand side, so subtract 5x from both sides. We get negative 4 plus 1x equals 8. Now you're going to get rid of that minus 4, so you're going to add 4 to both sides. 1x is equal to 12. And then divide both sides by 1, and you find that x is 12. So a really nice way to simplify a problem and get rid of fractions. Our last example is um, going to follow the same lines here, only now we have two different denominators. So we can't just multiply by 2 or by 3. We have to do the common denominator. So what we're going to multiply by is 6. And for this one, we're actually going to write 6 over 1 so that we can distribute that properly with all of our fractions. So we're multiplying the whole equation by 6 over 1. So I have x over 2 times 6 over 1 minus 1 over 3 times 6 over 1 equals x over 3 times 6 over 1 minus 1 over 2 times 6 over 1. Now, you multiply straight across with fractions, so please cross-cancel. In our first one here, um, it would be like 6x over 2, but then reduce that right away. That is actually 3x. Our next group of terms would be 6 over 3, but that's going to reduce to 2. So I just write minus 2. The next group of terms would be 6x over 3, but that reduces to 2x. And then lastly, we would end up with 6 over 2, but that reduces to 3. And the minus sign has to come along. Don't lose your negatives here as you're simplifying. Now we just turned what looked like a super hard problem because of all those fractions into a very easy two-step equation by clearing the fractions. And remember the key was just to multiply through by the common denominator. So just to show you one more time how to do this, we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. We end up with 1x minus 2 equals negative 3. Add 2 to both sides. 1x equals a negative 1. And divide both sides by 1. So our final answer is x equals negative 1.